Now, as you might have heard earlier on the program, a fairly big development, depending on how you look at it, in the trek towards 2023 for the People's Democratic Party. The former PDP governorship candidate in Anambra State, Valentine Ozibo, has defected to the PTOB movement and by extension the Labour Party. Mr Ozibo was considered to be one of the rising stars in the PDP. So how much of a hammer blow will his divorce be for the main opposition party? Or is it nothing more than a self-promotional stunt, as one PDP critic put it? We'll have analysis of that, uh, also an assessment um, of the reaction so far from uh, members of the People's Democratic Party. Now, we have, um, for more on this, I'm joined now with their perspectives and the talking points of the day. I'm joined for the rest of the programme by the journalist, policy strategist and Arise News analyst Waziri Adio and by the political affairs uh, commentator, Arise News analyst and lecturer at Bayes University in Abuja, Professor Abiyodun Adeniyi. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Let me come to you, Waziri. Um, what's your reaction to what you just heard. How do, how do you frame Valentino Zibo's defection from the PDP to the Labour Party of, of Peter be based on what you heard him say earlier on the programme? Well, I think he said all the right things. Um, this wasn't about him. Uh, it was about public interest. Um, it was about Nigeria, mm. you know, and, and all of that. So uh, that's one way to look at it. And I do expect him, I did expect him to say, you know, anything less. Uh, but we also have to put Saturdays in context. He's from Anambra State, right? And that's uh, Peter Obi's uh, own base. So in a way, it's a kind of boost to Peter Obi that at least he has, you know, it's not just him. Mm. Uh, you know, there's a chance that um, uh, he will be able to consolidate his hold on his state. But having said that, um, if uh, you ask him this question, if he had been uh, the candidate of, uh, if he had won uh, the, the election, Will he have crossed over? Uh, definitely not. If he had won his senatorial bid, will he have said that he's now, he wants to be obediently useful? I don't think so. Um, so I think despite that he frames this as, you know, selfless and, you know, I see it more in terms of other things that I said. He spoke about reciprocity. Uh, Peter Obi had been good to him and, you know, he feels that this is a time you know, uh, to, to kind of reciprocate, you know, that good gesture. But beyond that, uh, it's also because um, he's kind of um, uh, left hanging for now. Uh, so he has to be useful. Mm. Uh, so I, I don't think, uh, I think it's a good development. Uh, maybe other people will follow. Uh, maybe he has a structure. But he's also a new politician. Uh, we shouldn't lose sight of that. Yes, he did very well in the Anambra State election. But that doing very well rode more more on the structure of PDP. Mm. PDP, you know, is not a new party in Anambra State. There was a time when PDP used to be in power, uh, whether during Badinuju or during Gige, you know, and, and, and some other time. So it's, 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 um, it's uh, we need to watch it to see how much of difference this will make. But in any case, we expect Mr. Peter Obi to win Anambra State because that's his home state. Um, so. Okay, well, thank you for that. Uh, let me bring you in, Professor uh, Bjordan. At least one prominent member of the PDP has described Mr. Ozibo's defection. I mean, people are just getting to hear about yeah. it um, because he broke the news on this program. Um, um, but at least one prominent member of the PDP has described his defection as nothing more than a self-promotional stunt. Is that how you see it, or are you impressed with the strength of his conviction? Definitely I don't see it like that. I know Valentine very well. You know, we were uh, colleagues as winners of the British Chimney Scholarship 2003 and 2004. He was in Lancaster, I was in Leeds. I know him as a very brilliant person who doesn't take decision um, of the curve. He thinks about things properly. Yes, he did well in the private sector. He was in the banking sector, moved to um, hotel business, becoming the president of Transcorp. Um, Hilton, a gentleman, 
humble looking but exceptionally um, intelligent. So I want to believe that he thought about it properly because it is expected that if you do well um, in your business, in your private life, you know, mm. um, you should be able to replicate that in the political sphere. I have that confidence. And of course, we have seen him show very good um, signs, you know, of shining in politics with his performance in the uh, last governorship election in Anambra State. You know, so coming to Labour Party is going to be another ball game, no doubt. I also see him, you know, being able to um, transport his brand in the PDP um, to help the Labour Party as the case could be. And the meaning it is sending is that, you know, Labour Party is gradually being populated by professionals, technocrats, people who are not really, um, you know, immersed in the politics of compensation and patronage that the Nigerian politics is known for. You know, which makes it a very, very credible alternative to the behemoths that we keep talking about, the PDP and the APC. And that's a very good thing about this um, uh, transition that we are going through. You know, this build up to the 2023 presidential election. You know, it's much different from what we have had in the past, where it's, it's about essentially about two parties, you mm. know, those who we know before. We are now ha having a variant of the proverbial new breed, apologies to President Babangida, you know, populating a particular party and trying to challenge the status quo, you know, something that, um, you know, I don't want to uh, compare it with what happened in Kenya where we have a hostler challenging the dynasties. In this instance, we're having um, some new technocrats, you know, professionals. Yes, they had um, stints in the old parties, but they, but they have their own special brands, some kind of characteristics that are completely differentiated, you know, from the old order, which is a welcome development and good enough to spice the space allowing the electorates to choose properly, which means that overall we, we expect that the, the quality of uh, the next presidential election should be much better, hopefully. Well, let me bring you in on that, uh, Waziri, because um, the, the suggestion seems to be that you've got this change taking place within not so much the, the, the politicians themselves, but within the people who are the electorates who are going to vote them in. I mean, do you think that if, if the PTOB fails to win, as some, as some people have suggested, that that revolution will continue to exist, or is it likely to falter? Uh, the first thing I want to say is that, um, I won't use the word revolution, hmm. but the quest for change in society is not a, is not a sprint, uh, it's a marathon. That even if Mr. Peter Obi wins, mm. that yes, there will be a change in government. You will have been able to elect uh, somebody that you really want. But that will be the first time that it happened. For the real change that people want is in their fortunes. Mm. And like I said, you know, the price of liberty is eternal vigilance. You know, so it's a work in progress. People have to have that, um, you know, that stamina uh, to go for the long haul. You know, it's not just about electing a government. Uh, is about, you know, the job of citizenship, of, of being a citizen, is an everyday job. Mm. And it has to continue. So no a lot matter of vigilance the outcome. Yes. required. No matter the outcome of mm. the election. Uh, so the things that we're saying now, I also, we also need to put in a perspective. Because sometimes we just focus on the moment and we think that we have never seen anything like this before. That is not completely true. Uh, at different points in time, people have uh, tried to use their power as citizens uh, to, 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 to move for change. Um, you know, in, 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 in 2011, uh, because sometimes we have a short memory about this thing. In 2011, uh, President Buhari, candidate Buhari that time, ran you know, on the platform of a completely new party. He was in AMPP, and he moved to CPC within months. And he was able to still get 12 million votes. You know, so um, at different points in time, you see, and also in, in 20, uh, what's it called, in 2015, um, you know, uh, uh, some parties came together to form the APC. And, you know, people were also talking about change. So at different points in time, people have tried to use their power to bring about change. But we shouldn't have a short-term dimension of things. Mm. Um, we should <coughs> ensure that, yes, you might get whatever you want through the ballot box, uh, but even if you get it, you have to continue in the struggle. If you don't get it, don't give up. That is a danger that is likely to happen. That when people see that, oh, then they become disillusioned and say, oh, they, we can't, we can't. No, change is always a work in progress. Mm. That's a good point. And in assessing what this means, not so much for the Labour Party, which is gaining someone, but for the PDP which is losing someone. Um, do you 
think that these kinds of fairly high level defections are going to inspire a further wave of defections from the PDP, particularly within a particular demographic. Um, that was what essentially um, mm -hmm. Mr. Valentino Zibo was saying. Yeah, yeah, but, but I think in the build-up to an election like this, you'll be seeing minuses and pluses, you'll be seeing defections, you'll be seeing additions, mm. you know. Do not forget that about a few days ago, it was said that about 160,000 people defected to PDP in Adamawa State, whether true or false, you know, because I'm, I can't imagine how they were able to count 160,000 <laughs> people. And they also said in Ikitio Ondo that 10,000 yeah, yeah. members defected to PDP. <laughs> I have my doubt regarding how they are able to they're able to count them. You know, but what it means is that there are minuses and pluses. PDP is also losing people to APC. So the shuffling will continue in, as the election so as realign, the, yeah, realignments will yeah. continue. But uh, the fact of Valentine Odibu, I, I also believe that he's a very strong person, you know, very influential in a number of states. He came second. That's a very strong um, personality, you know, that political personality. But for me, I saw it coming, really. I knew that it was just a matter of time before he would um, decamp, you know, for different reasons. First, because a lot of people didn't even know in the first instance that he was one of the candidates considered to be vice presidential candidate to Atiku. He's one of the personalities considered, but of course he didn't get it, and I'm sure he made a, he didn't break a bone over that, you know, because it was gratifying to consider a young 55-year-old man that Valentine is for that slot in this first instance, where we have governors and some other kinds of mm. uh, people, you know, um, wittier people in, in parentheses, you know, uh, battling for that position. We see. But the fact that he was considered at all did a lot of credit to him. But uh, uh, at the end of the day, you know, I'm sure there must have been some other disaffection. But more importantly, he's not been too far from Peter Obi overall. He's, he hasn't been too far from them. And of course, it was you know, expected that at some point he would come out openly to support um, him, not only really because he's from a number of states, but because he also associates with the particular demographic that uh, Peter Obi appeals to. You know, he belongs to them, you know, directly or indirectly, not too far at 55, not too far from them. And of course, if you see his rise, his meteoric rise in his profession, in his politics, you know, and in his brand, you know, you could see that um, he was going to be a, an obedient person like they, like they used to um, uh, say. So overall, I think it's, it's, um, it's something that is going to redefine. I have you to say, <laughs> sorry to interrupt you, but I have to say that I'm rather inclined to agree with Femi Kuti, yeah. who, who thinks that, I mean, he, he asked on his video, he said, do you actually know what obedient means? He means that if they say sit down, you sit down. If they say stand up, you stand yeah, up. Yeah. And he said, as a Kuti, yeah. I mean, who has constantly the system. I just can't be an obedient person. Yeah, but I think he misunderstood the meaning of obedient. No, no, I, I, I think, yeah, 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 I think, okay. I mean, there, there was a pun. As yeah, that's why right. it's, it's all right. You know. But uh, Waziri Adio, in the cold, hard light of day, um, as you assess this defection, is this type of defection less problematic for the PDP because Valentino Zeba was a candidate and didn't actually win anything. Would it have been a bigger blow for the PDP if the defection came from someone who was elected? Definitely uh, it will be, uh, but you cannot discount uh, what mm. anybody will bring to the table. Uh, but as uh, Professor Adeni said, um, this is, uh, if you use a football analogy, uh, this is transfer season, right? Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, you see people moving from mm -hmm. one place to the other. And, you know, it also speaks to something about our politics. Our politics is not rooted in ideology. Mm -hmm. um, and so people can just move, they can wake up in one party in the morning, uh, to another one in the afternoon, and go to bed uh, in, the, uh, in the evening in another party. You know, so you are going to see a lot of this mm. uh, between now you know, and, and February. And you know, politicians is, is a mind game. Uh, you want to say that, oh, you know, we're, 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 we're hollowing you out. You know, we have more people with us. You are going to also see certain things, including parties mm. that are free candidates saying that, oh, they are, they are endorsing a particular candidate. Mm. It's part of our politics. You know, so uh, to go to your question, yes, uh, if is uh, is an elected person, if he's an older, more established politician, mm. that will carry more weight. Mm. But at the same time, uh, don't discount what he will bring to the table. 
Um, it's going to be a long campaign. We're going to see a lot of this, and uh, we'll never know what difference it will make until um, we go to the polls. But I feel very intrigued when people uh, who have been part of an establishment party wake up one day and start casting themselves or framing themselves as people who are anti-status quo. It's part of it's part of political framing, mm. you know. Um, you the know, politicians but, but, are constantly reinventing. Yes, themselves, they reinvented you know? themselves. But yeah. whether you know, but whether <laughs> that reinvention is something that we should take seriously mm. uh, or, or at face value is a different thing. Mm. And I like the word obedience. You know, you have you know, it's, it's something that has a nice ring to it and something that is that is kind of um, uh, memorable. Um, you know, so in, in that sense, they've got a nice, a nice frame mm -hmm. uh, to, to galvanize people, you know, around, you know. So that is, that is nice. Uh, but um, uh, it's also very important. Mr. Peter Obi himself used to be in PDP. He used mm. to be the presidential, uh, uh, the, the, the running mate of, of, uh, of uh, Mr. Atiku. And if he had, if he had emerged in, in PDP, he wouldn't be casting PDP uh, as, as, a, as, as, as that undesirable other party or the establishment, the status quo that must be overthrown. Um, you know, I, I just want to make that point. And the same uh, uh, Mr. Valentine Ozigbo and other people who are saying, oh, we are now, we are now different. Uh, when he was running on the platform of PDP, he wasn't casting PDP. Yeah, but you could make the same party. argument about Peter B. himself, yeah. who was, of you know, course, so, so we're, we're, this is what this is the game that politicians play. Mm. You know, um, we can we just look at them and, and listen to their messages, <laughs> and hopefully, when the campaign starts, mm. let's now start talking about issues. It's not about it's not about new. It's not about old. It's not about parties. What do you have to offer? And what difference would that make? And I think that is what we should be focusing on. Yeah, uh, no, beyond, I, beyond, beyond the yeah, issue of black I, I think because that, that, they are not—they are all crisscrossing. Mm. Peter Obi was in Abga. He went to PDP. Now he's in Labour Party. Uh, Valentine Ozigbo joined politics when he has done runs of two parties. Uh, he wanted to be governor. He was the candidate. He wanted to be uh, 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 senator. He didn't get the ticket. You know, and all of that. So I'm not saying the reasons that they have given is not valid. It's valid. But at the same time, um, uh, voters should also shine their eyes and look at these people. The way they are framing themselves is that what they are. And I'm not saying that's not what they are. But let's focus on their ideas mm. and how those ideas can tackle the urgent challenges that we face as a country. Yeah. But also on their... Not all this demonizing of parties yeah. and all of that. Yeah, no, know, absolutely. And, you know, but also looking at the individuals, their yeah. track record. I mean, Fantastic. the Professor Adeni, you spoke mm. of knowing Valentine mm -hmm. quite well yeah. and, and knowing his track record over a period of time, which kind of gives you a sense mm -hmm. of how consistent someone like that will be if mm -hmm. they ever, you know, in, in, in their beliefs and, and in the things that sort of inspire them. But let me ask you this, Professor mm -hmm. Adeni. Is it, in a sense, though, more alarming for the PDP that such a prominent member of the party would take such a strong line of grouping the PDP as no different from the APC? I mean, you haven't seen his, <laughs> the statements that he issued, which mm. is going to be published in the newspapers mm. tomorrow. We got the exclusive oh, okay. here on our rise. But... He's essentially cast in his letter to Atiku Abubakar, cast the PDP as no different from the APC and offering nothing new to Nigerians. Is that more alarming for the PDP than the actual act of defection? <laughs> I think, I think uh, like Waziri alluded to several, they are politicians, you know. I don't think they will take these things too much to heart, mm. you know. They have a way of just... Are preparing over these cracks, you know, seeing them as one it's of most rough a duck's back, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like water point was on the back of a dog, mm. it just glide off, you know. Mm. So that's how I, I've been, I think they, they see some of this. That's why you see some of them being vociferous in the way they attack themselves in the past, coming together, shaking hands, you know, having a meal together. So we're the ones who so tend to worry more <laughs> because, because they, they about them, and they all sit down together. Yeah, and they maybe sit down have together. A, they are, a jolly good laugh. There are people who carry on so easily. It doesn't mm. matter what the past offers. It's about permanent interest. You know, there are no permanent enemies. You know, yes. I mean, look at what happened in Abuja yesterday. Between, although we've not had had all the reports around it, between pres former President Obasanjo and, of course, yes, uh, a candidate. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it was even a shock to the system mm. that they could come to 
together, you know, despite all the broad sides, all the brick parts they've been exchanging all over the years, you know. So it's just an epitome of the kind of thing that can happen between them. I don't see the, I don't believe they, they see these things as something uh, fundamental, something that, should, that, that, should, that they should be totalistic about. They just see it as one of those things. And of course, I'm not going to be surprised if in another one or two years or mm. something else, a Peter Obi, for instance, returns to PDP or even the APC <laughs> or even my friend Valentine Ozigbo returning to PDP. It could happen, you know. It's for now, the parties are like special purpose vehicles, right. they, are no, they are yet to be ideological, you know. So, they're just vehicles for the attainment of political power, they are yet to be ideological. Maybe it's a stage in the evolution of our democracy, in the building of, of, a, of our nation state. Perhaps in the future, our parties will be rooted in ideology so that such that people will find it difficult to move. Even if mm. they disagree, they will remain within um, that system yes. and remain disagreeable okay. instead of pot, instead of moving from one party to the other. But I think there's one point I actually want very, to... Very, very briefly. Yeah, okay. Ten seconds. Sorry. Okay, you see, in, in the, as the campaign comes up as well, we're going to be seeing a lot more creativity. We've seen obedient, useful, and all of that. Superb taglines, you know, mm. and I'm, I'm very confident that PDP and APC are also working on their own. So maybe when the campaign starts, they will stimulate the atmosphere. They will entertain us more. I well, will it, enjoy it, the We're looking forward to <laughs> we enjoying can sit it. sit back and enjoy it. <laughs> yes. I want to thank you, as always. I mean, the two of you, absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Professor Abiodun Adeniyi and, of course, Waziri Adio. Thank you very much.